Hey guys, it's Ellie here, and today I am bringing you a week three PPL game analysis video. Holy crap, this game was absolutely incredible. So, this week we are facing the Miami Rotom Heat, um, who are coached by my wonderful, wonderful friend Ethan, otherwise known as Erastamus Gaming. I can never pronounce that, like, ever. Um, so please forgive me, Ethan, if I pronounced that wrong, which I probably did, because it's me. So week three um, is going to be a very tough squad because, ladies and gentlemen, we are facing a team with Jan Mega, Lopany, and Talonflame on the same squad, which is terrifying. Something I definitely had to prepare for, to say the least. Um, and I feel that I did relatively well. Um, he didn't bring specs tinted lens which was what i was most scared about on my on his team literally i was absolutely terrified and by the way before we get more into the video i would just like to apologize for any background noise you may be hearing right now my brother is currently rehearsing for his gig tonight so not much i can do and this is the only day i re can record this hence the delay by the way i am so sorry this is delayed this should have been out like three four days ago um but it's now here, so yes. So things to look out for this week, I've already mentioned Tannenflame, um, Tannenflame, Jan Mega, and the spooky, scary Megalopony. Also, sub can't mind Caldeo. Um, I prepped for that so much. Like, that thing just terrified the shit out of me. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are the four main threats I've prepped for. And uh, let's see how we get on with our team. Let's move on straight through the analysis. Alright, so first of all, we have a missing Pokemon slot because I'm an idiot and uh, haven't done my GFX correctly. <laughs> um, you're just going to have to excuse that. I am so sorry. But yes, we are bringing uh, Tree Scarf Togekiss again this week for the Yan Mega and for Outspeeding Megalopony. And just generally hitting things hard. This thing has got an amazing special attack stat as well as a really good move pool. Um, the moves that I have this week is Flamethrower, Air Slash, and Dazzling Gleam, along with Defog. Defog is kind of an emergency um, in case he gets up spikes um, with a clef key. And I have no other way of removing that from my field. So Defog is just there to be a last resort basically if he set, somehow sets up spikes with Clefie because I have something for that. I uh, have a trick up my sleeve for his Clefki. Um, obviously I'm running Flamethrower for the likes of Fortress, Clefki, and also Yan Mega in case I don't want to be messing Air Slash at a crucial turn or something. Um, so yes, that is Togekiss's moveset. Um, and Choice Scarfed, obviously, to outspeed Lopini. Next up, we have the almighty Darmanitan, also bringing Scarf Darmanitan this week because his team is spooky scary fast. Um, I believe I ran Head Zen Headbutt this week for Subcom, well, uh, for the Keldeo. Um, so my moveset is U turn, Zen Headbutt, Flare Blitz, and I think Rock Slide. I may have had Earthquake, I'm not too sure. Maybe I had EQ, Rock Slide, Zen Headbutt, and Flare Blitz, and didn't have U turn. I definitely had U turn, I think. I feel I had U turn. Maybe I didn't have Rock Slide. I don't know. But the main moves are obviously Flare Blitz and <laughs> Zen Headbutt. Um, to be honest, Zen, uh, to be honest um, Zalmanathan only t clicks one move anyway, which is Flare Blitz. So <laughs> the other. Um, the other move slots are kind of. Redundant. Well, not redundant, but you know. Darmanathan does one thing, and that is to hit hard. And that's why I brought it this week. Obviously, he scarfed again to outspeed uh, Mega Lopini and the likes of Keldeo and Yan Mega, providing those two are not scarfed. Next up, we have Flashfire Heatran on an air balloon again, specifically for um, for Talonflame. And you're thinking, Ellie, Talonflame doesn't get any ground moves other than HP ground. You're not wrong. But it is known that um, Ethan is a very crafty guy, and I thought he'd be bringing a natural gift to Talonflame this week with the um, ground berry. Not too sure which one it is because I'm a scrub and I don't know these things, although I probably should. 
Um, so yes, we have flamethrower, earth power, I think. No, flamethrower, will-o'-wisp, stealth rock, and raw on this heatran, I believe. Or maybe it, maybe it was. Ah, oh, I don't know. It's been a while since I had the game. Oh, I just lost the game. God damn it. Um, and you did too. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> um, I'm in such an odd mood this morning. Um, so yeah, we have Ebelin Heatran with basically uh, Willow, Flamethrower, Stealth Rock, and... Oh no, it was Hidden Power Rock! It was Hidden Power Rock. No, it was Ancient Power! Ancient Power, not Hidden Power Rock. Um, Ancient Power Flamethrower for Tunnel Flame, basically. And Willow, because Burning Things is nice. Flamethrower, because he has a huge fire weakness. Um, I absolutely needed Heatran this week, so... Yes, fully, specially defensive. Next we move on to physically defensive Venusaur. Again this week we are running HB Rock, Giga Drain, Synthesis and Leech Seed. I really, really wanted to bring Sleep Powder this week, but I had a feeling he'd bring Safety Goggles Keldeo or Safety Goggles Tanflame. So I, I just didn't bring Sleep Powder. And I'm glad I didn't because it never came into play. Like, and it turns out he did bring Safety Goggles Stand and Flame. So I was so happy I didn't decide to bring Sleep Powder because literally that would be the only thing I'd use it on probably. Or Lopini, but good years. Um, so we have Physically Defensive for Keldeo basically because Specs Keldeo does nothing to Physically Defensive Venusaur. Icy Wind does nothing because Thick Fat. Scald obviously does nothing because Resisted. And Secret Sword does about, or Sacred Sword does about, I want to say 30 to 40% to Physically Defensive. That's still quite a lot considering it's Resisted, but that's not the point. You can just wreck it with Giga Drain the next turn. It's also Physically Defensive for the likes of uh, Lopini. Uh, fun facts this set can live NA slash from Yan Mega and then Oko it with HB Rock. And I want you to take that into consideration this game <laughs> because there is a turn in the battle where I am in on the Yan Mega. Um, but she's, you will see what happens. You will see. Um, so yes, fully physically defensive Giga Drain, Hidden Power Rock, Synthesis and Leech Seed. I am rambling, I should probably get through this quicker. Next up we have physically defensive, no, we have uh, yeah, we do have physically defensive Milotic again for the Lopini. I am terrified of Lopini, oh my lord. Um, it also um, can live a modest Life Orb Giga Drain from a Yan Mega, which is absolutely disgusting. It only does like 50% without special defense investment. I'm saying only does as if like 50% isn't a big number. <laughs> so this week I'm running Marvel Scale because. T-waves are a thing and Klefki is going to be an issue for my team. Um, so I brought Marvel Scale because I didn't think uh, competitive would come into the play. Mainly mainly because I thought he'd bring Fortress for rapid spinning over uh, his Defogger. Uh, which actually ended up not being the case, which is a shame. But that's okay. Um, Marvel Scale really helps me out this match, so I do not regret bringing it. The moveset, now, this thing, I love it. Okay, so the moveset I'm running on this week on this Milotic is Magic Coat, uh, Recover, Scald, and Haze. Now, Magic Coat was for specifically for Klefki and setting up spikes. I am so happy I brought this because it means he couldn't spam spikes, he couldn't spam T-Wave, and he literally just couldn't touch me in return. Um, I was so happy with Milotic's performance this week. It did so much for me, and I'm very, very glad I have it. Um, so yeah, that's my Modo 6 set, fully physically defensive. Um, also to take Secret Swords from Keldia. I say take, um, it, it doesn't. <laughs> it just doesn't. So, yes. And then lastly, we have the No Guard de Blade. Adamant, full HP, full attack. Um, we are running Brick Break this week. Uh, we are running SD. You have no idea how much I wanted to run Protect over SD. Um, so I'm running Shadow Sneak, Iron Head, Brick Break, and Sword Stance. And I really, really wish I brung Protect because of High Jump Kick Lopini. Literally the only thing I'd, I would have brought it for. Oh, I'm so gutted I didn't. Ugh. 
Anyway, more on that later. Um, so I'm bringing Brick Break in case he wanted to bring dual screen Klefki, which is honestly what I thought he would bring because Lopini behind dual screens is spooky, it's disgusting, I don't like it. Um, yes, yeah, so I didn't want any Klefki shenanigans happening this game, which is why I brung Dooblade with Brick Break. And it also hits Lopini super effectively, so yes. Um, obviously stops to this will be Gligar and Fortress. Um, but, you know, obviously I have things for that in the form of, uh, Tokus, so, yes, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, right, let's get on to Ethan's team. So first of all, he's going to be bringing the Talon Flame. Um, he told me his set was Overheat, Brave Bird, Taunt, and Roost. Overheat was presumably for Deblade. Obviously Brave Bird was just as bird spam and to hit things. Um... Taunt was for Mega Venusaur or Heatran, I believe. Um, so he had... I don't think he ran much speed. He ran mainly attack and special attack investment and a little bit of speed to outspeed, um... Like... Jolly Darmanitan, I think, is what he ran. Um, but then again, I don't know why he would do that since Brave Bird is a thing. Um, yeah, maybe it was Jolly Heracross. I don't know. I don't know what speed he ran. Um, you should have to ask him. But I remember his moveset was Taunt, Roost, Overheat, and Brave Bird. So, yes, that is a thing. And we've got to look out for Talent Flame because not much of my team wants to take a Brave Bird. I say that, and it's literally two things that don't want to take it. <laughs> uh, I'm rambling. Okay, so next up, he is bringing the Megalopony. Spooky, spooky, scary skeletons. I believe this week he brought Baton Pass, Return, High Jump Kick, and Fake Out. And I was honestly, what I thought he was going to be bringing was Agility, Baton Pass into like fucking. Oh my god. I thought he was going to bring Agility, Baton Pass into Keldeo. And that thing just would have completely wrecked me. But he didn't. He didn't. And I'm just like so grateful for that. Oh my lord. You had no idea how much I was scared about that. Um. He ran Adamant this week because it just outspeeds my whole team, um, unless they are Scarfed, which is why I brought two Scarfers, <laughs> in case one of them died. <laughs> um, so yeah, High Jump Kick and Return is going to be doing a, quite a lot of work against my team, so um, I've really got to watch out for Megalopony this week. His third pick was Gligar. With the Hypercutter, which means he had Defog on this. He had Defog, Roost, Stealth Rock, and I think Earthquake. Um, so Air Balloon, Heatran is just a complete check to it. Um, we'll get to that later in the battle, though. Um, <laughs> you will soon see. Um, oh my god, this thing is so annoying. Um, not... I don't know. Like he could have, he could have ran U-turn, which would have been honestly more scary because that means you know switch initiative and stuff like that. Um, Gligar does have a four move syndrome, so I honestly expected him to bring Fortress over uh, Gligar, but that means he would have had a huge fire weakness. So looking back now, I kind of understand why he brought Gligar over um, Fari. Um, so to go with Gligar, he brought Klefki, obviously. Um, he told me his moveset was HP Ground and Psychic. Um, I'm guessing those are for Heatran and Venusaur, um, which is pretty respectable. Um, and then obviously we have Spikes and T-Wave, fully spe uh, specially defensive, absolutely disgusting. Hate the fucking keys, jingle jangle motherfucker. Um, I really don't like this thing. Um, but luckily I had things to deal with it, like Darmanitan and Heatran. Um, also had Togekiss for Flamethrower, so yes. Um, next up we have Assault Vest Harry Armor with Thick Fat. Now I was like, hello, I have like a, I have two Scald users. Why are you not bringing Guts? And then it occurred to me, he literally had no switch-ins to Banded Darmanitan with Flare Blitz. Like, even this would not be a switch-in <laughs> with Thick Fat. Um, like this, this Harry Armor is a, it's not a problem, it's a hindrance. Like, it's a mild inconvenience to my team. Um, especially with the Assault Vest, because Air Slash is from Togekiss. It's going to do a lot, but I'm pretty sure it can just Oko me with Stone Edge and return. But 
Um, so yes, we obviously have full HP and attack investment. I think his moveset was Fake Out, Close Combat, Earthquake and Knock Off. Um, I'm pretty sure that was his moveset. He might have had um, Bullet Punch over Fake Out now that I think about it because of Togekiss. Um, but yeah, that's Hariyama. And lastly, he brought the Yan Mega with the speed boost. Not quite as scary as Tinted Lens specs. Um, both are very situational, of course. Um, he brought Modest because why would you need Jolly? <laughs> Timid, rather. Um, I believe his moveset was Bug Buzz, Giga Drain, Air Slash. No, it was it was Air Slash, Giga Drain, and HP Ground for Heatran, um, which is what I thought he would bring. Is another reason I brought um, Air Balloon Heatran. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shenanigans and then I think his last move was protect to come in on the scarf Darmanitan and then completely wreck it next turn um, so yes that is the team um, let's go on to the battle alright so Ethan is issuing a challenge and he is going to lead off with his mega lupini as I lead with my Lothic expecting the Klefki um, as I mentioned, I do run Magic Coat, so I really didn't want spikes on my side of the field because my team really doesn't appreciate it. Because it's my team is very grounded. I don't have many levitate or fly many levitate users or flying users, uh, flying types rather. So he's gonna go for Fake Out first turn and basically get a free Mega. Um, so my Lysic, I think my Lysic was the best lead for me here. Um, he's actually gonna withdraw not wanting to take a school, he's realising that I'm f fully physically defensive, so he's going to switch in, not wanting to take a school, risking the burn, which is respectful, and I actually do get the burn on this Klefki, which is very, very nice. Um, this residual is definitely going to be helping me out. Um, we both get a turn of lefties back, and he is going to be whittled down with that burn. Now, this is the turn where I reveal the magic coat, uh, predicting him to go straight for the layer of spikes. Um, a magic count, uh, magic coat, adic, uh, blah, blah, blah. oh my lord, my words right now. Magic uh, coat acts like magic bounce the ability, so obviously it's going to bounce back any hazards or any kind of status move heading towards me back onto his side of the field, which is really good for me. Um, here I think I go for a Scald, predicting him to switch out, and he actually T-waves me, which is definitely a mistake on his part because of Marvel Scale. I do get paralysed here, which is kind of unfortunate because, you know, this uh, Kalefki would have had more damage on it, but, you know, not the end of the world. Um, we both get lefties and he's going to be whittled down by the burn again. I'm going to be going for the Magic Coat this turn, expecting him to go for spikes. I don't really lose anything by spamming Magic Coat. Um, I, I really don't lose anything by staying in because he can't touch me. He literally can do nothing to me, especially with Marble Scale. And the fact that he's got no special attack investment, he really cannot touch me. So he's actually going to withdraw here. And I should have clicked scored this turn because I knew he was going to withdraw, but I went for Magic Coat. That was the first misplay of this match, but that's okay. Um, he's going to go for Defog, realising that I'm not going to be competitive. Um, which is good for him, but not too good for me because now the spikes are gone. But that score does over half, and that is disgusting. I'm going to switch here knowing that he's also going to switch, but he stays in because he is a man. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a misclick, but he was like, nah, tell me I'm a man. Maybe he was banking on para hacks or something, um, but I got really annoyed because he stayed in. Um, so I go for U-turn here um, after I switching into Troy, my beloved um, Darmanasan. <laughs> Gonna go straight out into Tojikus, um, putting on some offensive pressure, maybe bluffing the HB Ice. Um, also means I can defog away these rocks if I so choose. But I know he's going to withdraw here and go for the Klefki. And I accordingly click Flamethrower and I'm very happy I brought it this week because Klefki is down really early on in the battle. Really, really early on in the battle. So now he gets a free switch into Megalopony to really put some offensive pressure on. Um, fake out damage, obviously to scout if I'm... Uh, lefties or life orb, not life orb, lefties or choice or whatever, um, which is why he brought it in here, I'm assuming. 
Um, so he's gonna go for the fake out, get some chip damage on whatever comes in. That's doing literally nothing to um, my low sick after rocks and lefties. That's doing like disgustingly little damage. He's gonna go baton pass here in case I wanted to switch out. Uh, I have no reason to switch out at this point because I'm fully defensive. He's gonna go into Hariyama on this incoming school. And as you can see on this roll, I think I get max roll because that does quite a lot. And I'm thinking, that can't be assault vest. That must be doing more. That has to be doing more if that wasn't assault vest. But I'm pretty sure I just got a max roll there. Um, I'm going to withdraw because I don't want to be taking this close combat. I have a really safe switch into Venusaur. Um, he's going to go for knockoff or close combat here. So Venusaur was my best switch, safest play I could have made. Um, and I really want to preserve. Really want to preserve. Um, Milotic's health for Tan and Flame and Lopini. Now here I was seconds away from clicking HV Rock because I knew he was going to switch this in. I absolutely knew it. But Leech Seed was my safest play because, you know, getting HV back from the Hariana had he chose to stay in if he had Zen Headbutt or something. I don't know. Um, I didn't want to reveal HV Rock until Tan and Flame was on the field. Adamant um, Adamant Brave Bird cannot kill me, so I go for HV Rock, and that means his Talon Flame is off the field. Holy crap, I am so pumped. Like, I was so pumped at this point in the battle. I was screaming. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, because that's one of his biggest threats gone. Now, here comes Yan Mega. I live this. I can live this. I know I can. Modest Life Orb. Fucking Air Slash from a Yan Mega. Doesn't kill. But I flinch, and that is such an important turn in a battle. This Yan Mega should have been dead to HV Rock, but sadly that is not the case, and Venusaur goes down to another Air Slash. I was praying he would miss that, not gonna lie. Um, oh, I was so gutted that I got flinched there, but that's okay, it's part of the game. So I'm gonna go into Tetra Kiss here, praying I don't get flinched, because this is the only thing that can take a modest Air Slash at this point. Um, and I don't get flinched. <laughs> I was like, I was so relieved because this thing would have swept my team otherwise. Um, so the Yan Mega goes down, and this turn I realise I'm not choice scarfed! Ah! So I'm panicking now. I'm thinking, shit, I've got the wrong item on my Toji Kiss. So I'm gonna have to preserve this, obviously, because it still does a good amount against his team, especially against Mega. Lopini because it is adamant and I will be out speeding as I am timid. I'm gonna go straight into the blade, not fucking around. And he goes for a return here, um, which I don't agree with. Like, he could have gone fake out there um, because I outspeed him. I would have outsped him. Um, he's gonna go to Gligar here, which is when I reveal Brick Break. Um, I should have gone for Iron Head that turn. That was a really stupid play. I really didn't want to reveal that that early. Um, but he's gonna withdraw predicting me to switch out into god knows what and he's gonna go into megalopony because that does a lot against my team but i'm actually going to switch out into milotic so the one thing that it can't really do much to <laughs> um so i'm gonna get lefties back after switching in on the stealth rocks he's gonna go for fake out get some chip damage on this milotic literally doing less than 10 well it's doing about 10 percent but obviously after lefties it's doing less than that so he's gonna withdraw here and i think go into his harry armor on this incoming scald um so i connect with the scald obviously because i can't miss because no bright powder and such in this league no burn yet and i'm thinking right i really don't want to stay in but i have no other alternatives so i just have to spam i just have to spam um scald at this point um, so I go for recover this turn, knowing that he's either going to knock off my lefties or go for close combat. Either or, is going to be quite damaging. He goes for earthquake here, predicting. I don't know. Maybe it was the safest play. Uh, I don't think he wanted to go for close combat in case he anticipated the blade switch. But here I go for scald, and I get the burn, which is really, really handy because it does turn out he was thick fat this game. So the residual is going to be slowly whistling down this Hariyama as it's going to go for close combats, just trying to get as much damage off against me as it can before its inevitable death. I get paralysed here, which isn't too big of a deal because I was clicking recover anyway, so... <laughs> I think he was just banking on para hacks at this point. 
Um, he's gonna go for close combat, which is doing pitiful damage. And I'm just gonna recover all my health back, get all that lovely HP back that he just spent uh, so long trying to get rid of. Bless him. <laughs> so the Hariyama goes down, and at this point, he has only got Gligar and Megalopony. I've got Togekiss, I've got Darmanitan, I've got the Blade, and I've got Milotic. So I'm 4 2 up right now. I'm in a really, really good position. There's no way that this can go wrong. <sighs> I get parried this turn, which is important because that means I miss a, a Scald and I miss a chance of possibly getting a Scald burn. So I go for Scald this turn and it does quite a lot. Um, I think that power was a really big turn in the match, but it's how the game goes. So Milotic goes down there and I really, really shouldn't have let Milotic die because I needed something for the Gligar, or something more reliable for the Gligar, I should say. I go for U-turn here expecting the Gligar to come in. Um, he wasn't man enough to stay in with Lopany, like he had to switch to Gligar here. Um, so I'm going to go for U-turn and go straight back out into Tojikiss, I believe. I think that's what I go- No, I go into Heatran! I still have Heatran left! That's right. I go into Heatran, making its first appearance of the game. Now these turns are very stally, um, because obviously he can't touch me and he needs a guaranteed safe switch into Lopany. And I reveal the Willow too early! Oh man. So, this is him um, playing mind games, basically. Um, him trying to ensue a very safe switch into Lopany. So he's basically just going to be spamming Roost and uh, Stealth Rock. And I'm going to be going for Flamethrowers and Stealth Rocks and, and Will-O-Wisps. That's basically the premise of these turns. Um, so obviously he's clicking Roost here as I go for Flamethrower, I believe. He outspeeds me. Um, so that means he's got speed investment of some kind. Because I think I sped creps this heat round to outspeed um, um, uh, Uninvested Gligar. So, fun fact. <laughs> um, so, I'm just spamming Flamethrower at this point. Um, Roost is getting him nowhere because I'm whittling him down each turn. And he's going to withdraw this turn as I go for Stealth Rocks. And oh my god, I should have, I just should have kept spamming Willow. That was so stupid of me, but... Oh well, he got me. He got me. Ethan, fuck you in your mind games, man. So obviously I have to switch here, I can't- This- oh, this was such a stupid play. If I had- if I had kept Darmanasan, I would have won this game. Um, I'm thinking, like, he would have gone for, um, Fake Out. I had literally no reason to hard switch into this, but, oh well. Um, I'm gonna go into the Blade here, and I had a chance to live this high jump kick. Oh nope. Too- too- too far into the game. Not far enough into the game, actually, what I should say. Um, I'm gonna go for Iron Head here, predicting the switch. And it's not quite enough to take him out with the burn. And I should have gone for Iron Head again, because Earthquake wouldn't have touched me. So that was another misplay. Um, he's gonna switch in this Lopany on the predicted Shadow Sneak, which is a very, very good play. I should have seen it coming, I should have gone for Iron Head, but... Alas, I did not. Now, I had a chance to live this high jump kick, but he got a crit to rub salt in the wounds. Um, it did about... It does... It has a chance to do 77 to 88%, and I think I was on about 79 HP, maybe? Something like that. Um, but he got a crit, so... I mean, it did, probably didn't matter, but I was very salty about it at the time. And Megalopony, at this point, just cleans up my team. I was really hoping on the high jump miss on that Heatran here. Um, he's going to withdraw here, thinking that I'm scarfed, um, when in fact I am lefties. <laughs> um, he's basically just going to guarantee himself the fake out. Um, so Gly Gligar goes down to Stealth Rocks. I go for Air Slash. Obviously it's not going to hit anything because nothing's on the field. Going to get back a turn of lefties, which I shouldn't have even had because I should be scarfed, but stupid me. Um, but he's going to come back into Lopany and finish the game with a fake out. Good game, Ethan. Um, I shouldn't have sacked Darmanitan when I did because, ugh, what an, what an idiot. That play always makes me cringe when I rewatch it. 
Anyway, that was the game, guys. Next week, I'm facing Fred Ford of the Borussia De Blades. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not, because I'm a spastic. Um, he's packing Mega Mawile, QRMB for Alligator Dragalgy, Heliolisk, Magneton. Huge number of sets on his team that I've really got to look out for. So it's going to be a very interesting game, to say the least. I'm really looking forward to it, Fred. Um, thank you, you guys, for watching, and I'll see you in the next upload. Bye!